Hello, my name is Mikolai Bekaziak. I work at the EU delegation to Georgia. Uh, as we know, the second wave of the COVID pandemic is affecting many countries around the world, including Georgia. It's my pleasure today to have EU Ambassador Carl Hartzell uh, for a short discussion on what the EU is doing to support Georgia through this pandemic. Thank you, Ambassador, for joining us here today. My first question regards uh, the 100 million euro uh, macro financial assistance that the EU provided to Georgia recently. Can you explain to us what this money will be used for and how it fits into the overall framework of EU support to Georgia during the pandemic? Well, thank you. Um, to give an overview, since the start of the pandemic, the EU and Team Europe have mobilized 1.5 billion lari of assistance to help Georgia deal with the pandemic. Almost two thirds of this amount comes in the form of grants or gifts, if you like, and the remaining are loans at the best rates uh, we could secure. I'm proud to say that this is one of the highest levels of EU assistance per capita to any country in the world. Uh, and it should be seen as a demonstration of the EU's strong solidarity with Georgia at this time of crisis. So what are we doing with this money? Well, our support can be roughly broken down into four areas. Well over half of the money is directed at strengthening the Georgian government's anti-COVID efforts, including to implement the anti-crisis economic plan and ensure the government has enough financial means to function properly. Most of the 100 million euro loan we recently transferred to Georgia is for this purpose. Secondly, EU support is also directly going to uh, strengthening the Georgian health system by providing medical equipment like ventilators, masks and training to medical personnel. And thirdly, we are paying particular attention to vulnerable groups such as persons with disabilities, IDPs or victims of domestic violence who are especially negatively affected by the current crisis. In this field, we support civil society organizations to provide direct support to each of these groups. Finally, special efforts are made to support economic sustainability and recovery, which will remain a key challenge for a long time. Here we have allocated almost 250 million lari to provide easier access to loans for businesses, grants to agriculture, rural development, tourism and vocational education all over Georgia. These are the objectives we have set for ourselves, and this is what we're working hard on right now to bring to fruition. You mentioned that the European Union and Team Europe will be providing this assistance. Can you explain to us who Team Europe is? We are the European Union, our 27 member states and our financial institutions, in particular the European Investment Bank and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And we call ourselves Team Europe because for this particular challenge, which is the pandemic, we have had to work closer than ever together in order to make sure that we are absolutely coordinated and that we are bringing out the maximum strength of our efforts. And we have been working together both in Europe and uh, out of Europe. And as part of our global efforts, we have together managed to uh, mobilize more than 36 billion euros so far to assist uh, the globe, if you'd like, uh, throughout this pandemic. Thank you, Ambassador. You mentioned that over half of the support the EU is providing is going to support the government's anti-COVID efforts. Uh, how will the EU ensure this money is well spent? Well, first of all, to say that uh, it's important to work with governments. This is true here in Georgia, as it is true elsewhere in the world, because only governments have the necessary uh, powers to uh, tackle a crisis of this scale through its ministries, through its uh, personnel, through its agencies around the country. So that's very fundamental. We have been working here in Georgia with the government already from the start of setting joint priorities on how to get through uh, this pandemic. 
uh, and we have been working very well, I must say, including to set the targets for the anti-COVID uh, economic plan. We will have a number of uh, measures in place to make sure that we have proper monitoring of uh, the implementation of this program and uh, the money that we are putting into that. Uh, we are working together with uh, IMF, we are working with NGOs, and we are working with uh, the State Audit Office here in Georgia to make sure that uh, the proper uh, monitoring is being carried out. Uh, in some cases we are very specific about where we would like to see our money going. In our resilience contract we have, for example, uh, set a target of at least 70,000 households uh, extra getting targeted uh, social assistance, 30,000 companies at least being able to uh, retain their personnel throughout the pandemic, and uh, a minimum number of 150 emergency care hospital beds being provided to hospitals. So these are very concrete targets. And um, taking it all together, uh, we believe that we have the required checks and balances from the start, which we will continue now to use as we uh, bring along the implementation further. You spoke at length about the EU support to the government's efforts, but the EU is also providing direct support uh, in Georgia, including in the health sector. Can you say a few words about that? Yeah, with, with regard to fighting the pandemic itself, we are working hand in hand with the World Health Organization here. And uh, so far we have managed to, uh, to bring about some 2 million medical supplies, including uh, personal protective gear, masks, gowns, etc. But also uh, some equipment such as ventilators, which are obviously important. And uh, we're hoping before the end of the year to have uh, a new shipment coming here to Georgia, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, in all, uh, we are trying to support uh, the people on the ground and uh, our uh, support goes directly to some nine laboratories around Georgia, but also to the Emergency Coordination Center and some more than 4,000 ambulance drivers and doctors who are getting uh, both uh, these supplies to help their work. But we're also providing training uh, when it comes to, uh, to working as safely as possible, how to handle stress and other such things, which is so important. Because at the end of the day, we know every one of us under how much strain uh, these workers have been working now for a very long time and also at the peril of their own lives and they deserve all the support all of us can give them. Uh, to wrap up, can you maybe let us know where people can find out more about what the EU is doing to support Georgia during the pandemic? Well, uh, we're trying as hard as we can to get the information out there and I would recommend going to uh, the EU delegation's website but also uh, to social media. Uh, we have an active Facebook page and we're also trying to push information through uh, our Twitter accounts. Thank you very much for your time, Ambassador. Thank you so much.